one. This is Mary over here at Images on Page. I know that it's been a bit. Um, I think the last thing I uploaded was in October. And right around then, it, my life just got really hectic. Work got super hectic, both good and bad. Um, I had a coworker who was going through a lot of personal stuff, so she wasn't in work a lot. And then I also got full time, so my hours got, I got a lot more hours, obviously, which is really awesome, but it was a lot to juggle. And then Christmas happened and family time, and it's just, didn't really have the energy to film and edit. So I'm back hoping to kind of get back into a role of doing this. So I'm not going to go over, I'm not even going to do a December wrap up. I'm not going to go over all the books I read in 2018, but I did decide that I would do kind of a best of 2018. Um, so the, my favorite books that I've actually read in 2018, just to kind of close off the year. Now these are in no particular order. They're just all the ones that I've read in 2018 that have stuck with me and that I loved and that I want to go back to other things by these authors. So the first one I'm going to talk about is this is kind of an epic love story by Kieran Callender. This is just a really cute kind of YA rom-com is the best way to explain this. Um, it is told from the perspective of Nate, who has recently broken up with his girlfriend Florence for reasons, um, but they have stayed friends and he still kind of has a thing for her, but she is in another relationship with someone else. And then Nate's, one of Nate's old best friends from like elementary school comes back into the picture, Oliver, Oliver, and he moves back into his old house and they kind of start to become friends again and Nate develops more than friendship feelings for Oliver. So that is really cool. I should mention that I think all my favorite books are queer <laughs> in this list. Surprise, surprise. Um, so as I stated earlier, Nate has a love interest in Florence's old friend who is female and Oliver who is male and then Oliver at the beginning of the story does have um, a boyfriend in this, so he is queer as well. Florence is queer. Um, Oliver is deaf, so there's just so much representation going on in this book. Um, I believe both Oliver and Nate, at least, are people of color, so that's really awesome as well. And it's just, it's such a cute rom com. -y. Like, of course, there's those angsty moments or those miscommunications or whatever. But it's just, it's a feel-good novel, which I really needed when I read it. I believe I read it in November, and I just adore it. It's so cute. I love the coloring. I love the cover. I would highly recommend this if you're looking for just a cute YA rom-com that have mostly queer characters. The next book I'm going to talk about is a graphic novel. It is Fent. I don't know. It is Fence by by C.S. Pacat. Um, she wrote, oh, the Princess Gambit series. I can't remember the title of it, but anyway, um, like I said, this is a graphic novel. It's a really pretty, it's an all color, so gorgeous artwork. And it's about this lower middle class high school student who um, falls in love with fencing and he um, is able to go to a like more high hope high profile school that does fencing and he gets like a scholarship and one of the best fencers in the country ends up also going there of course they have a big tiff because he's hot-headed you know the typical thing this is also very queer um at least um I think he has some attractions to males there's another character on the fencing team who, they go to an all boys school and so he just kind of, I don't know how to say this without sounding negative and I don't mean it that way, but without, he, he has a lot of different partners, but they're not long term partners and they are all male. Um, so it's just, it's just really fun, kind of action-y if you're into anime or manga, like those 
sports mangas especially. Um, it kind of reminds me of Hayaku to a bit, if anyone realizes that the volleyball anime, which is one of my favorite animes of all time. Um, but just with queer characters. So I don't know what else more I could ask for, and I would definitely recommend it. It is, I mean, it's a graphic novel, so it is fairly short. Um, I think volume two just came out, um, but it was, I know for a lot of people this one is a bit harder to get a hold of. I, I did read parts of like, cause it go, this is volumes or chapters one through six, I believe. And then, then I read chapters seven through whatever was up to date. I think it was like nine or 10 on my ebook and it is actually manageable on my Kindle. So if you have that or like a tablet that you can get a, one of the reading things on or your computer, cause like I know the Kindle has a PC like app program thing that you can read it on it is actually manageable that way um you, it is you can read it and like then if you get it on the pc it will be done in color so but also recommend this one and i'm excited for the second one so the next books i'm going to talk about are our series i know there's been some kind of controversy i don't know controversy there's been some mixed feelings about this it is it's called the All for the Game series by Nora Zakovic. Um, the first one is called The Foxhole Court. I loved these books. Um, they had like a sale, an ebook sale where they were like 99 cents a piece. And I read these in like a total of four or five days, which is hasn't been the case for me now. Um, it follows the main character of Neil Johnston, he is going to this kind of like tiny school and he gets recruited by Palmetto State to join their, oh, what is it called? XE team. Um, it's kind of a made up sport. It's kind of like a combination of lacrosse and soccer maybe, or lacrosse and football. It reminds me most of lacrosse um, from what I've seen. Um, but he is actually on the run from his dad, so he's kind of in hiding. So it is about him trying to decide if this would be a good step and him kind of deciding to stop running. But the biggest thing about the entire people are all the teammates or members of the Palmetto State team is they are all misfits or they all have broken use. They're all troubled in some way. Um, like one of them is used to be a pole dancer, another one was a drug addict, one of them was clinically determined as being psychotic because of some things in his past and he's on some psychosis drugs and stuff like that. So it is, they are all very broken characters. But I do have to say from someone who absolutely loved this, I do have to give the biggest trigger warning of all time. This has some pretty dark stuff as kind of mentioned before the characters are all basically assholes so they're not really nice to each other especially in the beginning um there's a lot of, there's some mention of past child sexual and um past child physical and sexual abuse um like i said drug addiction alcoholism you think of it it's in here as one of their pasts so I just would be cautioning you because these are not sane people um well they're sane but they are not undamaged and I think that's why I loved it so much is because these are not perfect people in this book the characters all have a variety of issues and they have stressors that they've dealt with poorly or well and it's mostly about Neil Johnston finding a place to stand and finding a home, which is one of my biggest tropes is like found family things. So I absolutely love this. I actually read it twice in 2018. I read it once at the beginning of August and once right at the end of August and um, I would highly recommend this. Characters in here are queer. There's an um, openly gay, character side character um 
and then there's more queerness that is revealed later so I don't really want to talk about it for spoilers but I get what people were saying with some of the issues they were having with it but I just found this to be an incredible series and the last books but certainly not least these are actually probably my absolute favorite um, I only I'm gonna show the first two because those are what I have in hard copies but I think the series has seven out now and it is in the authors continually producing more he releases about one um, one a month on the 10th and I always pre-order them that is the criminal intention series by Cole McCade um, I absolutely love it this series this is probably the queerest mystery series I have ever read so I know some people did so first of all this is some it's based around these two detectives and some of the cases they work in their lives so I do want to warn that there's some pretty graphic stuff in here because they it is pretty gritty because it is a mystery and they do solve the case like try to solve the cases and they they're homicide detectives so they are it is pretty dark at times um also when it uh, some people didn't like it but I actually loved it was the writing of this was um the author mentions that it is written more kind of like a TV series so each book is kind of like an episode and that is actually said on the front like season one episode one um so it is treated kind of like a TV series where the each book has its own mystery that needs to be solved but there's an overarching issue and mystery that also takes place in these focus on the two the two main characters um, one is detective Malcolm Kalaji who is Iranian and then the other one is detective Zhang Jae Yoon um, who is Korean so that is also really awesome this is an own voices book it is um, people of color main characters queer main characters Malcolm is he's never actually stated to be bi but he was married to a woman and they had promised a life together before things happened and he does have interest in men Song Jae is gay their main captive um captain the captain of their precinct is a romantic there's a non-binary non-binary character in there their computer person Sade so it's just all the main characters in here are all queer, huge amounts of different spectrums. I don't think there's really a white character in this book, which is really refreshing to see. And it's just so well done. There are parts of the writing, um, Cole McCade's writing, where it's more the quiet parts that really get me. Um, they just, they're so impactful. But it's just, I'm so invested in these characters. So incredibly invested in Song Jae's and Kalaji's, or Song Jae's and Malcolm's partnership, how they work as detectives, how they work through being partners because they're kind of forced to be partners in this, in the first series and they were both working on their own. So they have to kind of learn to trust each other as partners. And I just, it's everything. I absolutely love about detective novels where it's based more around the detectives lives in their dealing with this than the actual mysteries but like I said um, a lot of times it does open with the mystery that they have to solve usually the killing of someone so it can get a little graphic so just be warned but I would highly check these out like I said I'm recommending them to everyone I know super queer mystery that I cannot get enough of. Well, those are my top books of 2018. I am definitely gonna continue with the Criminal Intention series. Like I said, um, he said there's gonna be about 12 or 13 episodes in the first season. He is currently on the seventh, so we're about halfway there. And like I said, I pre-order them every time. I would highly recommend them. He is very prompt and they're just fantastic. You guys have any questions or 
have you read any of these? If you have, please leave comments down below. I would love to find some other people who have read these. But until next time, ta-ta for now!